Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode two of Game Development with 3JS. In the last episode, all we did really was set up our folder structure and get an HTML shell set up here. And when we went to our local host and forward slash three, you can see that we have absolutely nothing here but a white screen, and that's exactly where we wanted to be. I know we kind of rushed through that episode, but the idea was just to get some folders set up and to get an HTML shell up. I promise you I will slow down from here on out and kind of make sure that we understand the concepts of what we're talking about before we just kind of blast through everything. I just, I figured we kind of can wrap our heads around folder structure and an HTML shell. So in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the big three items in 3JS, and that is the scene, the camera, and the renderer. Now, these are the three most vital pieces to anything that you do in 3JS. Essentially, you can't you can't have anything attached to anything if no objects if you don't have a scene to attach them to. You can't see them if you don't have a camera. And nothing gets rendered to the screen if you don't have a renderer. So those are like the big three essential pieces to making sure that your 3JS game works. So that's what we're going to set up here in this episode. So we're going to head over to our main.js here. Um, and we're just going to start coding away here. Now the first thing that we need to do is add, I'm going to close this down here, just going to refresh there. All right, now the first thing that we need to add is our require.js. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with require and that is going to take an array there and a function as the second parameter. Now what this is going to do is make the import of our other JavaScript classes a lot easier. Say we put something in the game package, we can do game forward slash um, subfolder uh, forward slash JS file. And it's just going to be it's going to make the process of including other files a lot easier and it will make a whole lot more sense to you when we start including those files. So, as we said earlier, we need the big three and what we're going to do here is we are going to create variables for the scene, for the camera, and for the renderer. Now you can name these anything you want, but um, conventionally they are scene, camera, renderer. Uh, it's up to you if you want to follow con convention or not. I'm going to stick to the conventions for this. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a function. And a function is kind of like a method if, you, if you're used to like Java programming or any other kind of programming. Functions are like blocks of code that we can call all at once and it'll run that block. Uh, I'm not going to cover too much of these topics because I might do a JS series later on. But for right now, we're just going to say that a function is a block of code that gets run. And we are going to call this init3js. And in this function, we are going to initialize all of our 3JS stuff. So the first thing we need to do is set our scene equal to a new 3.scene object. So essentially what a scene is, is it's just empty space. So think about the world before it was created. We had empty space. Now, to that world, we can start attaching stars and planets and an Earth. And to the Earth, we can attach people. And so the scene is basically that big, giant, empty, blank space that we're going to be working in. So that's the first piece we need. The second one is the camera. And the camera gets set to a new three dot perspective camera. Now there's two major cameras here that we can use, one of which is the perspective camera, which allows us to see 3D objects as they're viewed. Um, so if you have a block that's farther out than a block that's closer up, the block that's farther out will look smaller than the block that's closer up. So it actually shows things in their real perspective. Um, and then there's the orthographic 
uh, camera where if two objects are at that same, one's farther out and one's closer up, they will appear to be the same size. And that's kind of used more for top-down gaming, sort of like uh, SimCity would be a really good example of use of an orthographic camera. But we kind of want that real 3D perspective uh, for our camera, so we're going to use the perspective camera. Now, this takes several parameters here, and I do believe it's four, one of which is kind of like your field of view. How far to the left and right can you really view? And for that, we're going to say 45. So that's kind of like from dead on to the edge of your peripheral. We might change this, bump it. Sometimes I use 75. It all depends on what we want to look at here. The second one is the aspect ratio of, of our screen, which is going to be window dot inner width divided by window dot inner height. Now, the last two parameters are how close and how far away our field of view is going to be. So for this first one, we're going to put one. So one unit is going to be kind of like our close perspective. And we're going to say that we can see from one unit to about 1,000 units out. Now, these are world units, so they are kind of essentially whatever we determine them to be in the future. Um, but for now, let's just think of it as we can see one unit close and a thousand units away. Sometimes people will use 0 0.01 for the close and like 10,000 for the, the far. We can tweak these numbers as we get into our actual programming and see what works best. But for now, it's just a basic setup. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually attach this camera to the scene. So we say scene.add camera. So now we have a scene, and in that world we have placed a camera, and we said add it to the scene so that we have a camera in that world. The next thing we need to do is set up our renderer. So renderer equals a new 3.webgl renderer. I do believe it's renderer. Now, there are several different types of renderers. Um, the WebGL renderer is not always compatible with every single browser that's out there. Um, so there's also like a canvas renderer, but we're just going to work with the WebGL renderer because that's what we want to work with. So the next thing we need to do is we need to say render.setSize. And again, we're going to say window.innerWidth and window.innerHeight. And then we need to attach this, um, this renderer element to our actual HTML. And the way we do that is we call document.body. And then we are just going to append the child. And the child that we're going to append is the renderer dot dom element and what that is is it is a webgl canvas that is stored within our renderer object when we create a webgl renderer so it's a, a webgl ready canvas that's stored within that object and we're just attaching that to the body of the document and the last thing we need to do is we need to say renderer dot render and we actually want to render out our scene and we want to render out our camera now, if we go back to our web here, you'll notice nothing has happened, and that's because we haven't actually called our init3.js function here. So all we got to do is init3.js, save that, and when we come back over here, we should see a big black screen. Now, you can also see that there's some side scrolling happening here and some up and down scrolling and some white around the edges. And we're going to fix that really quick here by creating a new file. We're going to save it into our CSS. And we are going to call this styles.css. And back in our index here, we are going to do a link um, equals style sheet uh, type 
equals text.css and href equals css forward slash styles.css and then we can just close that out. And in styles, what we are going to do is we're going to call the body element and we are going to say that the margin on the body element is zero pixels and the overflow we are going to set to hidden, which should get rid of the white and the side scrolling here. So let's pop that back open and refresh. And that's exactly what it did. So what we're looking at here is not just a flat black screen. This screen actually is a 3D world. Now, it doesn't look like that right now because there's not an object attached to this, but this is actually a 3D space that travels on indefinitely in all directions. And as we start attaching things to this, you'll start to really see that, oh, this is not just a completely black screen but this is, in fact, a 3D world. Now, there is something fun that we can do here, and if we head back into our main.js, just below the creation of the new renderer, we can do render.setClearColor, and we can do 0x and then some sort of color hash. So we could do, like, ff0000 and save that. And this should turn red here. So you can play around with the clear colors if you want to, just so you know that it's working. I'm going to leave this at zero right now. And that will leave us with a completely black void in which to add things to. Now, this render dot render scene is not exactly what we want it to be because it's only calling it once and we want to call it as many times as we possibly can so that the render object renders as fast as it possibly can and doesn't just happen once or else nothing will be moving, nothing will be updating, and nothing will be changing, and that is what we are going to cover in the next episode. But this is going to do it for this one, so thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next episode of One Stop How-To Guys Game Development with 3JS. Later, guys.